The following is from the Melodramatics podcast where we discuss all things theatre and drama. So if you like theatre, stage, drama, films, check us out on Spotify, YouTube and all the other streaming platforms that I'm not going to go through. Okay, this is You Can't Rewrite Theatre and today we're looking at a classic play that I love. <laughs> so Grease. Is the it's word, a 1971 music. Is the word. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. (laughs) (laughs) It's a 1971 musical by Jim Jacobs and Warren Casey, featuring rockability songs, 50s car culture, and greasers. It focuses on two teens in love in 1959, greaser Danny Zuko and the Australian Sandy Olsen. And Australian Sandy Olsen. They are in love. They spend time at the beach. After this love affair, they both return to school. What they don't know is that they're both attending the same school. Danny's the leader of the T-Birds, a group of geezers. Well, <laughs> greasers. Geezers. Geezers. I guess in. they're geezers now, I'm leaving they? that in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> While Sandy hangs out with the pink ladies, a group of pink-wearing girls led by Rizzo. I spelled her name wrong in my notes. When they clash at Rydale's pep rally, Danny isn't the same Danny from the beach. Comedy and musical numbers ensue, and the pair ultimately fall in love again. I hate this play. Hmm. Why? It's a brilliant play and a brilliant film. It's got terrible messages. Songs are redundant. It, I admit, yes, it is a bit, you know, you have to change your way change in order to get the guy. Change yourself and the boy will love you. Yeah. It's not even... That's not even the the message that I I take most anger with. It's uh, it, it's the, it's the whole ending. So the like flying car, Danny. Like no, no, no. Like Danny emotionally manipulates Sandy and says like he doesn't like her, and then like finally gets a date with her. <laughs> and then when they're at the um the the fucking drive-in cinema, like he forces himself on her. Like it's expected that they're gonna have sex. And when she says no and and leaves, he gets all sad that he's lost the woman because why, why, you know, why, Sandy? It, why why did you leave me type of thing, and then she just changes herself and goes with him anyway. What a what a great message! So yeah, the basic message of Greece is force yourself on a woman and she'll fall in love with her and become hotter. <laughs> yeah, I mean the message isn't the best, but at the same time, you know, you got to look at when it was set. You know, mm. that unfortunately was the mindset of a lot of people back then. Mm. So you got to look at things for the era. I don't think that's a good argument either, because it was it's set in the fifties, but it wasn't made in the fifties. No, it was made in what the eighties, yeah. wasn't it? Seventies. Seventies. Yeah, and even they, back yeah, then. Yeah, surely. They, yeah, but surely they would have known that this sort of stuff is wrong, and they like they they comment on it without irony. Mm. But anyway, this is a comedy segment, so <laughs> <laughs> all right, supposed to be. So in this segment, we're going to rewrite Greece and make it better because it's a steaming pile of shit. Rewrite Lauren, Greece. what have you got? Okay, mine's a little bit more lighthearted than Mel's. Um, basically. I got rid of the whole high school and the friends and the cars and the basically everything about Greece, but just kept Sandy and Danny. Uh, so we're going to throw it back to ancient Greece where Danny, he's a sculptor, and one day he sculpts a beautiful woman made of ivory. Now this sculpture is supposed to be a gift for the king of Rydell, but after seeing how beautiful and realistic she looks, he falls in love with the statue and names her Sandy. So he's got to fuck a statue. I love it how we're back in Europe again with you. <laughs> Couldn't help it. There's, there's no just, Jews this time, I promise. Just, just him just carving that statue and he's like, oh, that's a bit of all right. Mm. Nah, because like, isn't that a, a, a Greek tragedy or a Greek myth? about? Yeah, um, so I took it from Pygmalion. Yes, that's what it is. Which is where yes. he falls in love with his statue. Yes. See, suddenly, like, sex dolls aren't that weird. (laughs) I mean, they've been around for a while, right? Anyway, continue, Lauren. Thank you. Um, Hey, hey, I'm the host. Continue, Lauren. (laughs) How about no? My God. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So over the course of the summer, 
Danny becomes so obsessed with Sandy that he starts to imagine her as a real person, caressing her and kissing her lips. He imagines taking her out in public, walking along the beach, hand in hand, and everything else that comes with being in love. At the end of the summer... (laughs) Does he just, like, load it up into a wheelbarrow and just walk it down the street? (laughs) Well, this is Greece. I don't think they had wheelbarrows back then, but sure. In in ancient in Greece, ancient Greece, in ancient yes. Greece, not Greece as in you know the nineteen yeah. forties. <laughs> I'm sure they had wheelbarrows in the nineteen forties or fifties. And so, at the end of the summer, the king comes to pick up the statue from Danny, and Danny is too embarrassed to admit that he's fallen in love and desires Sandy, so he lets the statue go. Oh! But that night, so essentially, Danny got cucked by this king. <laughs> What? Oh god. Not well, I mean, yeah, yes and no it sounds like. Hmm. Or maybe that's where the story goes. Oh. oh. So that night <laughs> Danny dreams of Sandy. And in the dream, she comes to life and has long blonde hair, blue eyes, and a fair complexion. She's sweet and softly spoken and tells Danny that she loves him. But in the dream, Danny is a jerk and he humiliates Sandy, telling her she's just a statue and that he created her and that he would never love a woman made of stone, especially one as ugly as her. Now Danny wakes up from his dream, desperate to make things right with Sandy. Changing from his drab sculpting clothes, Danny puts on his finest clothes and races to the King of Rydell's castle to steal back Sandy. Still back Sandy? Still back Sandy, <laughs> who is still a sculpture. Yes. It's, no, it's not, that's the twist in your story. Her name is it's Sandy. It's not Sandy, <laughs> it's Stan. <laughs> you haven't been writing me. At, the, at first, Danny tries scaling the walls of the castle, but they're too high and he falls off into the surrounding moat. Next, Danny tries fighting the armed guards, but all... But all he has to fight with is his sculpting tools, and the guards beat him up. (laughs) Finally, Danny tries running. Turns out he's a pretty fast runner. He manages to run past the guards, into the castle, up the stairs, and into the (laughs) statue chamber where the king keeps his sculpture collection. Some great security going on in this place. (laughs) Yeah. So Danny picks up Sandy and runs back down the stairs, out of the castle, back to his studio, without being stopped at all. What, he just picks up the statue and just and just, runs. And just legs it. Yeah. Like, he's the fastest. Yeah. He's real fast. <laughs> just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I wonder about his strength. <laughs> I mean, what's the statue made out of? Like, what kind of just, stone? Just one, he just picks up the statue with one hand and uses the other hand to push the guards out of the way as he's running. Details, Shmeetals. <laughs> You've never actually said how big the statue is. Doesn't it be matter. Like size, it does right? not matter. Size does not matter. Well, <laughs> <laughs> tell us more, dear. <laughs> Continue, Lauren. Back in his studio, Danny admires his sculpture, wishing he had never let her go and wishing for her to be real so that he can marry her. The goddess of love hears Danny's wishes and turns Sandy into flesh when he kisses her on the lips. Aphrodite. But now, the king and his guards have caught up with Danny. But Danny pleads to them to let him and Sandy go, confessing his love for Sandy and expressing their desires to get married in front of the king. The king, of course, is not going to allow this, such perversion in his kingdom. So the king forces Danny and Sandy out of the kingdom, threatening to kill both of them if they return. So Danny and Sandy run off into the sunset together. The end. Aww. Aww. I like it. That's sweet. That is sweet. (laughs) <laughs> Did you? And I like it how it's it's Greece set in Greece. I like that. Yeah, That's good. I didn't even realize uh, that. Oh, yeah. I didn't pick up yeah, on that. Yeah, very clever. Very clever. I mean, like it. it's a I'll take credit for it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a brilliant pun there. Well done. Well done. <laughs> okay, dear. What have you got? Where are you taking Greece? Dun, 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 dun. No, not Star Wars. Um. <laughs> So oh, that'd be amazing, uh, right? Wouldn't it? No, I didn't think to do that. Come I'm on, you guys... your boyfriend, Sandy. 
<laughs> no, no, it's impossible. <laughs> Oh my god, yes, 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 but no, but no, god, you guys really go into all the details of writing, I sort of just give like an elevator pitch. Anyway, um... I don't, I just have a few notes, that's... Oh, good, good, okay, so I, I'm not I'm not the worst person in the world, that's good. I'm gonna shoot from the hip on my one. Oh dear god, no. Um, anyway, so I'm not sure if you guys have seen the film Jennifer's Body. I've heard of it. Yes. Yes. Okay, so pretty much what it's about is these two high school girlfriends um, uh, go to this this show at their local bar. It's an out-of-town band, and the band set the place on fire, kidnap the girl Jennifer, <laughs> sacrifice her to a demon in order so they could get famous. What? But they botch up the sacrifice, and she's um, possessed by a demon. What? And then Jennifer goes back to high school and goes around pretty much eating all the boys who are interested in her. Oh, yum. Usual, yeah. you know, high school stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah, I did that all the time in high yeah. school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, it's very, very girl power-ish. And mm-hmm. like Benny was saying before, you know, Greece is very sort of violence, well, not violence against women, just sort of... Oh, no, there is violence against women in Greece. Yeah, it's just you got a poor message for women. So I'm imagining, right, Greece set in the modern day, and it's like Jennifer's body, right? So, you know, Danny and Sandy are at the beach and they see like this this out of town band and they go they go to the band and they enjoy it and then the place burns down and Danny gets kidnapped by the band. Um <laughs> Because he's a virgin, but he's not actually. Um, and they go to sacrifice him, <laughs> thinking he's a virgin, but he's not. Which uh, they they leave him to die, and because he's not a virgin, he gets saved and taken over by this demon. Then, when they go to school, Sandy's new, and she sees Danny, and Danny's being really weird towards her. Oh, okay, okay. Anyway, so the whole story goes about. Um, Sandy realizing that Danny's been possessed and she's she's not sure if he loves her or not. And Danny's just going around pretty much eating everyone. Um, it's exactly the same thing. Just every character Danny comes in contact with who isn't seen again dies. So, for example, like the office ladies, he eats both of them. He eats the principal, you know. Um <laughs> And when they fly off in the car, that's not an illusion. No one's noticing. Yeah, no one's noticing. And Sandy's too worked up. She's like, you know what? He's not He's not seeing me for me, you know? Maybe I should become a Satanist. Um, so she becomes a Satanist and worships him. And at the end, when they're flying in the car, that's not like make-believe. That's actually his powers. He's actually floating up in the car with her. And everyone's actually freaked out yeah. in this edition. They're like, what the fuck is going on? Ah, so it's not like a hallucination brought on by drowning. No, <laughs> no, no, it's actually real. So yeah, that's that's my grace, um, which I think would be really good, and I call it um, hair gel. Yes, <laughs> there you go, hair gel, hair gel, the musical. So wait, you should have said like the demon comes into their body through lightning, so uh, you could call it grease lightning. Grease lightning, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. That's that's how he kills them. He zaps them and then he eats them. Mm. So there you go. So that's my take. All right, who's next? <laughs> I like it. Uh, so um, Mel has written a uh, a novel again for yeah, us. Yeah, you ready for it? So, yes, Mel is uh, the member of the Melodramatics who can't be here today. So I put on oh, Mel's voice. But she's here in spirit. Hello, my name is Melanie. No, that's not really how she speaks. Uncanny. I know. She's got she's got a bit of, yeah, she she's got a bit of an Australian accent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you imagine like because Sandy is Australian, yeah. Oh yeah. Danny! Like, if she came on with the most bogan Aussie accent. Oh, All right, I'll yeah. put. No. Oh, Danny, right? Remember when we shagged down at the beach? Oh God! <laughs> I can't <laughs> believe you do that to me, Danny. I went and became a cheerleader for you. Oh, yeah, mate. <laughs> All right. Um, so Mel has put the setting as a Mars colony in the 1960s retro space aesthetic. Like Forbidden Planet and Barbarella, even 1927 Metropolis. Nice. Mars Colony Rydell has been a separate country from Earth for more than 50 years and has developed a separate culture. 
anyone from Earth is considered oh, so, an outsider. So they colonized, they colonized Mars before, like... Yeah. Because it's, it's set in the 1960s, yeah? Yep. Mars before Moon. 1960s yeah. retro space aesthetic. Oh, aesthetic. Okay, so it's still in the future, but yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyone from Earth? I can't read. Anyone from Earth is considered an outside influence as they are trying to leave the old ways behind on a wrecked planet, though it is common for Earthers to come to the colony for holidays. And this is where Sandy comes in. So Sandy is a colonist from Earth who was only, was only meant to be on Mars for a holiday but decided to stay, which surprises Danny and makes him act more Earth-like, much to the dismay of the T-Birds, his friends, in the technician maintenance department, which are responsible for the upkeep of Rydell. Think lower class workers. I like it. This is hard sci-fi. <laughs> Rizzo like decides. The, sorry, it sounds a bit like The Expanse. I like it. <laughs> Rizzo decides to take Sandy on and employ her as part of the space aesthetic department, known locally as the Pink Ladies, who are sp- responsible for all public advertising aesthetic design and architecture for the Mars colony. Unknown to and Sandy. I'm sure that he's up. Oh, my gosh, I'm sure that he's up to interrupting me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What are you going to say? I was going to say I'm sure he's uh, well and up to date with all sexual harassment laws in the workplace. Yes. Okay. Unknown to Sandy, Rizzo runs the Pink Ladies as a sort of upper-class mafia gang and have many people in the colony under her control. As Sandy settles into Rydell life, she discovers that Danny is in fact a bit of a wanker. Danny knew that Rizzo would take Sandy under her wing in the Pink Ladies and was trying to use Sandy as a ticket to higher class of Rydell. Turns out he is very handsy as well. When Rizzo discovers this, she pays two other members of the T-Birds to conspire against Danny and make it all look like he lost his hands in a freak accident by accidentally pushing... This sounds like good fellas. <laughs> <laughs> by accidentally pushing him into a teleport beam and his hands are teleported away to an unknown location, probably the depths of space. Wait, wait, the song that he sings at the end is Handy! Handy! <laughs> oh, boy. So many connotations there. Yeah. Danny is able to get mechanical hands to replace them, but these hands do not provide him with a sense of touch. He and the T-Birds start to build a small craft so they can illegally return to Earth and seek asylum out of an old ship that they called... Greased lightning. Hey. Rizzo has a pregnancy scare, and knowing that whoever the baby daddy is will seek to share her power, she undergoes an abortion with the help of Sandy, who has knowledge of ancient Earth methods to do this without raising suspicion of medical personnel who could stand Rizzo down from her position because Sandy has bought some of her some sort of emergency contraception pill from Earth. She's grateful for Sandy's help, and she and the Pink Ladies give her a space makeover, making her fully fit their aesthetic now so that she is a full member of the colony. Rizzo takes a sample of the pills and begins manufacturing them so that all women on Mars can have access to emergency contraception. Sandy finally feels at home among the other empowered women. Sandy, being the nice girl that she is, goes to visit Danny and see how he is doing with his new hands. She stumbles across greased lightning and the T-Bird's plans to escape, and Danny confronts her about how corrupt the system is here and how they are basically slaves to Rizzo with no rights. He begs her to go back to Earth with him, back to the culture where he would not feel oppressed, but she refuses. She goes back to Rizzo and tells her of their plan to escape. She's pissed. One of the T-Birds was the baby daddy and is now trying to flee from her, though it is never revealed which one. They wait until the annual Rydell Festival, the festival that celebrates the colonization of Mars, and wait for the T-Birds to emerge with their ship. 
They know that they will stage it as an entry to the annual space race, but then use the opportunity to fly back to Earth once they are in open space. The race begins, and the pink ladies gather on a hidden vantage point to watch. Sandy takes off her shirt and reveals that during her makeover, she chose to have one breast replaced with a laser weapon for self-defense. From a distance, all the T-birds see is with her shirt off, and as they make their escape, they start calling lewd comments from the ship, believing there to be no repercussions for them. The rest of the pink ladies also take their shirts off, revealing that they have had the same makeover. The T-birds have an oh shit moment as they realise what is happening. They're blasted from the sky as they try to make their escape, and Danny initially survives the explosion as his spacesuit is not punctured. But he realises that the gravity of space means that his trajectory is into the darkness of space, not back to the habitable planet. He yells and waves his arms to get attention of onlookers, but no one sees. In space, no one can hear you scream. It is revealed at a later time that the emergency contraception did not work for Rizzo. The fate of the child is left ambiguous. Oh, dun, dun, dun. Grace two. Now we have some explanations. Do you want to hear them? Yes, let's hear our explanations. Uh, so the breast lasers, they're a reference to ancient Amazonian women tribes. Who would cut off one of their tits, yeah. Yeah, they'd slice off their breasts mm, yeah. in order to make armour easier to wear and easier to fight. But it's also a reference to the fact that Olivia Newton-John, who played Sandy in the original film, suffered from breast cancer. And so this is an illusion in the script, makes a breast a weapon of power rather than a sexual object. The breast can be deadly to both the woman and their victim. Uh, Danny's hands, they're symbolic of labour class, but also refers to ancient punishments of thieves who would have their hands cut off if they tried to steal something, in the case of Sandy's virtue. Contraception and pregnancy. Traditionally, women have had to give up positions of power or jobs when married or pregnant. In this case, Rizzo maintains her position of power as she has a support network. And the oppression of working class men. In literature, this is called vagina dentata, which translates to vagina with teeth, concept that a woman can take away a man's power through sexuality or that the idea of penetration will result in castration. In this script. Have any of you guys seen the movie Teeth? A long time ago. Yeah. It's such a good film. Yes, let's not discuss that. (laughs) But in this script, there's a role reversal in this colony. The aesthetic work that the women do is considered more essential than the technical work the men do, which raises the question of what this futuristic society values. There you have it. I dig it. I dig it. And I like the explanations. Yeah. I should do that next time. I feel like we could make that a film. <laughs> I mean, with the proper budget. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Dear, get a credit card, max it out. Uh, not again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I guess it's my turn. Okay. You so I looked at the themes of Greece, and one of the themes is car culture. It's very car centric. What other movie is really centric on cars? Cars? Mad Max. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Especially Mad Max Fury Road. Oh, yeah? So oh, it's no. set in the future in a post-apocalyptic wilderness. Again with the post-apocalypse. The nuclear wasteland ages everybody. So even the teenagers look like they're 40 to 45 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Danny meets a girl in another village. A separate for his village. He spends some time with her. He likes her. He uh, explains that he's just a nomadic traveller. But truth behold, he's actually part of another tribe called Rydale that's going to invade and take them all for slaves. So Rydale invades in this place and they take all the people for slaves. But Sandy is very beautiful. So they decide that she can't be like the other slaves. So she gets offered to one of the high-priced gang leaders, uh, Rizzo. Um, Sandy explains that she actually met a person from this uh, gang uh, known as Danny. 
So, during the celebration of winning the war, Rizzo decides that Danny and Sandy should meet because they are currently at war with the T-Birds, and this could be a way to sort of you know, find a, a chink in the armour. Uh, Danny refuses to uh, admit that he knows Sandy, crushing her. Several years go by. This is a, this is a long form story. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, you know, not everything happens in a semester. <laughs> there is now peace, uneasy peace between the Pink Ladies and the T Birds, with the marriage of Kaneki and Rizzo. The two warring factions are finally working together. But as I said, it's very uneasy. They're expected to uh, produce an heir. Rizzo has a feeling that she is pregnant, but there's something wrong. One day, Sandy notices that Rizzo has a black eye, and she explains that Kaneki has been beaten, has been beating her. Meanwhile, over at the T-Bird camp, Danny notices that Kaneki is a lot more frustrated than usual. He questions him, and uh, Kaneki finally admits that he doesn't agree with their way of life. Danny is like, what do you mean, our way of life? Our way of life is good. And Kaneki's like, I don't know, man. I, you know, I've always been forced to, you know, be with women. Mm. Isn't there another way that maybe, like, I could do the stuff you do with women, but with men? Mm. (laughs) Absurd. Yes. He explains that he has these urges for Danny. But Danny explains that he is still very much in love with Sandy. This infuriates Kaneki. Kaneki, whatever his name is. Kaneki. He then goes home and beats Rizzo, forcing a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. What a dick. Enraged. Sandy rescues Rizzo and now admits her true feelings for her. <laughs> Rizzo and Sandy have been in love the whole time mm. and have been secretly happy. They start secretly planning their escape. Rizzo manages to find a gun. She shoots Kaneki right in the head. You know, for, you know for what he did. He, he deserves it. He's an asshole. Yeah? <laughs> and the two run away into the wasteland together. <laughs> A distraught Danny realizes that he can no longer be with the woman he loves. This forces him to go completely insane. He then takes a wig from you know one of the, one of the people they like fucking you know yeah you know, one one of the spoils of war, <laughs> yes, and then puts it on Kaneki's body and wanders out into the wasteland with his Sandy. Oh, <laughs> oh. okay. <laughs> The mind of it's a light-hearted comedy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, says the man who loves cannibal holocaust. <clears throat> yes. See, I feel that we needed to address the clearly homosexual relationship between Kaneki and Danny. Well, See? you know, I mean, that's a fantasy of every young girl, but mm. sure. <laughs> yes. There's got to be some good fan fiction of that. 